In this video, we are going to look at a very important characteristic reaction of aldehydes and ketones called the aldol reaction. And the primary driving force for this reaction is the presence of the acidic alpha hydrogen in these carbonyl compounds. For example, here we have a carbonyl compound which is a ketone. And you can see that the carbon adjacent to the functional group which is the keto group is the alpha carbon and the next carbon becomes a beta carbon and the hydrogen atoms attached to the alpha carbon are the alpha hydrogens. So in this compound we have 4 alpha hydrogens and 6 beta hydrogens, correct? And what makes these alpha hydrogens acidic? Well, it is the electron withdrawing nature of the carbonyl carbon. You see? The electronegative oxygen atom draws electron density such that the carbon atom here gets a partial positive charge and that makes the carbonyl carbon electron deficient, isn't it? And as a result of that, what happens? It draws electron density from the adjacent carbon atoms here, which is the alpha carbon atoms. And because of that, these adjacent carbon atoms become again electron deficient. Now, because of this decreased electron density at these alpha carbon atoms, these are unable to hold on to their hydrogen atoms effectively. In other words, this CH bond becomes weaker and it becomes easier to break the CH bond here. So what is the consequence of this? Because these CH bonds can be now broken easily, that means the H plus ions are also released with ease. And that is what makes these alpha hydrogens acidic. So basically all of this happens because of the electron withdrawing nature of our C double bond O group. And that's not all. This removal of hydrogen is further aided by the fact that the resulting anion, which is called the enolate ion, is highly resonance stabilized. As you can see here, when we have a base that abstracts this acidic hydrogen, we get a negatively charged ion here, which is called the enolate ion. And this enolate ion is resonance stabilized. The negative charge delocalizes with the pi electrons of the C double bond O group, giving us two resonance structures. Now, because the enolate ion or the conjugate base is resonance stabilized, it further aids the abstraction of the alpha acidic hydrogens. So, let's now see how these acidic hydrogens drive our aldol reactions, alright? Now, obviously, for our aldol reaction to take place, the first condition is that our carbonyl compound, that is the aldehyde or the ketone, must have an alpha hydrogen atom. I mean, our substrate cannot be a formaldehyde or a benzaldehyde as they do not have any alpha hydrogen atoms. You can see that in formaldehyde, we have only C double bond O here. We do not have a carbon atom adjacent to the C double bond O and thereby we do not have an alpha hydrogen. Same is the case with benzaldehyde. So, these two carbonyl compounds are not suitable or they cannot undergo aldol reaction because they do not have an alpha hydrogen atom. Another requirement is the presence of a strong base. Yes, we need a strong base like NaOH but in diluted amounts. We don't want concentrated NaOH because you see, we don't want unwanted side reactions. Basically, we are using a base like NaOH to furnish OH- ions that can abstract our acidic alpha hydrogens. So, because of that, we do not want highly concentrated base that might result in unwanted side reactions and for the same reason, we dilute a strong base. So, these are the two conditions that are required for the aldol reaction to take place. So, let's now look at the mechanism of the aldol reaction. For that, we are going to take the example of acetaldehyde. Now, the first step in aldol reaction is the removal of alpha hydrogen, obviously. So, OH- removes one of the alpha hydrogens from CH3CHO and result in the formation of the enolate ion. Now, this enolate ion adds across another aldehyde molecule and result in this alkoxide ion. So, here you can see that the negatively charged enolate ion attacks the electrophilic carbon atom of acetaldehyde. Pi electrons delocalize and result in the formation of an alkoxide. The last step is the protonation of alkoxide ion to form the corresponding product. Now, this product here is beta hydroxy aldehyde. So, we call it aldol. And when we have a beta hydroxy ketone, we call it a ketol. Now, in general, aldol reaction can be used for both aldehydes as well as ketones because of the similarity in the reaction mechanism. So, you can see that in the aldol reaction, a new CC bond is formed. And this reaction is also reversible in nature. 
that means in the presence of a base or an acid the equilibrium can shift back and forth between the aldol product and the starting carbonyl compound now this acid base equilibrium actually favors the starting materials but because the reaction forms an enolate ion which is an excellent nucleophile it reacts immediately with any available electrophilic center in our case that would be another aldehyde molecule correct and that results in the formation of a new cc bond and this is how all the starting aldehydes would eventually get converted to aldol addition product even though it began with an unfavorable acid base equilibrium and notice that this reaction is more favored in the case of an aldehyde as compared to a ketone we know that ketones in general are less reactive than aldehydes towards nucleophilic addition reactions this is because the carbonyl carbon in ketones is more sterically hindered and is less electron deficient as compared to the carbonyl carbon of aldehydes and we've discussed these factors in detail in the previous video if you have any doubt please revisit the video on why ketones are less reactive than aldehydes in nucleophilic addition reactions all right moving forward when we heat this aldol with the elimination of a water molecule between the alpha and beta carbon atoms we get a highly stable alpha beta unsaturated product now for this dehydration to happen we obviously need to provide heat and the oh minus from the alkaline medium abstracts the acidic alpha hydrogen atom a double bond is formed between the alpha and the beta carbon atoms and the elimination of hydroxide ion takes place now i know what you're all thinking how is the oh minus leaving isn't it a poor leaving group yes of course it is but you see there is a greater stabilizing force that is forcing our oh minus to leave as a leaving group and that is the stability of our final product Yes, this dehydration step is exothermic leading to the formation of a highly stable conjugated product. The alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound is highly stable due to the conjugation between the carbonyl group and the C double bond C here. And by eliminating small stable molecules like water, product formation becomes highly favored. So this is the mechanism of our aldol reaction so aldol reaction is until we get the product aldol and when we get an alpha beta unsaturated compound we call this an aldol condensation reaction so now that we've discussed the mechanism of the reaction let's quickly solve a question so the question is identify the products a and b in this reaction so the reaction begins with two moles of an aldehyde and it's reacting with dilute naoh in the first reaction in the second reaction we have dilute naoh in the first step followed by heating in the second step now the first step would be the abstraction of alpha hydrogen so oh minus abstracts the alpha hydrogen and results in the formation of an enolate ion the second step is a nucleophilic addition reaction where the enolate ion attacks the carbonyl carbon of another aldehyde molecule so here a new cc bond is being formed you can see that the negative charge the c minus attacks the carbonyl carbon here delocalization of pi electrons take place so this entire ch2 group comes here and we get an alkoxide ion the last step is the protonation of the alkoxide ion where we get the corresponding aldol correct so this is our product a now in the second reaction the first step is the same we end up getting an aldol but in the second step we are heating the product so with the elimination of a water molecule from our alpha and beta carbon atoms we get the final product which is an alpha beta unsaturated compound so this is a product b so a is the product of our aldol reaction and b is the product of our aldol condensation reaction